Hello everyone and welcome to the stunning Sugarloaf in Maine. We're here deep in the heart of the beautiful Carabasset Valley Trail Network for the sixth round of the Enduro World Series 2022. It's time for EWS Sugarloaf. Racing got underway here in Maine yesterday afternoon with the pro stage. Rock Lobster was a high octane slice of everything that makes riding bikes in Sugarloaf so good. Rain earlier in the week plus rising temperatures had left it rooted, rutty and ready for racing. Gloria Scarzi continued to make a name for herself for third place on the pro stage. Second position went to the defending champ and a racer that we really have yet to see the best from in 2022, Melanie Poujan. But out front it was a huge ride from Isabel Cordurier, still racing through the pain barrier. She proved yet again that she wasn't up for giving up her yellow plate anytime soon. pushing 100% because my physical is still a bit low and I think but everyone is tired after such three hard races in a row so I'm just trying to do the best I can with what I have at the moment but for me the main goal is to have fun so I'm clearly only looking for that. In the pro men's race racing at home for the consecutive weekend was Richie Rude. He won EWS Burke. Could he make it a historic US double? The man he's trying to catch in the overall, Jesse Melamed, was one spot off the road and had added some additional points to that lead. But no one could catch Pivot Factory Racing's Matt Walker. The Kiwi beat Melamed to the line by nine hundredths of a second to claim his first ever stage win. Quite surprised to be honest. Um, it was messy out there, like super slick conditions, hard not to make mistakes, but I guess everyone is, so I don't know, just make the least mistakes possible and hang on to it and see how she goes. The second day of racing at EWS Sugarloaf had been adjusted due to a storm forecast to arrive later in the afternoon and would see the racers take on five classic stages. The first of which was Rookie River at 1.8 kilometres in length. After that, it was stage three, the 355, which was the Queen stage, and the longest off the race at four kilometres. Jackpot was stage four, before the ominously named Crusher DH for stage five. The final stanza would be a rerun of Rock Lobster as stage six. The first stage of Sunday was an eye-opener. Rookie River was one of the steepest of the weekend and charged through the trees back down towards the race village. Giant Ewan Deneau was up for day two. He stormed home to a third place in the opener just ahead of Jack Moyer. Richie Rude was second on the stage and now up to second in the overall. Out front it was all change. Walker had come a cropper on Rookie River and he rolled to the bottom of the stage down to eighth in the overall. Just came out swinging a bit too hard on the first stage. You kind of just need to be patient and I just overrode it. Smoked a tree at the top and then had a big crash further down. Had like a stick stuck in my cleat so I couldn't clip back in as well. So just blowing my foot for the rest of the stage, but this is what it is. Melamed on the other hand was clinical. Six tenths of the good, Jesse led. I 
Ibis's Rafaela Richter was continuing her fine run of form and was third on the opening stage. Isabel Cordurier knew that this block of racing in Canada and the US would be crucial to her title aspirations. The foot injury would heal, but it needed time. And in the meantime, she needed points. First on stage two, just ahead of Bex Barona, was a good start. I didn't start it great. I had a flat on the first one. I was really enjoying it and it dried a lot, so the conditions were good. But yeah, I had a flat and then it was quite hard, but I made it on time uh, at the top of this one. How many degrees of movement does an owl have in its neck? 355 was the sadly inaccurate guesswork of the team that dug the third stage. Regardless of being ornithologically inaccurate, it was the Queen stage. The toughest of the weekend and four kilometres of rocks and roots. Isabel Cordurier's lead was cut by five seconds on stage three. Second on the 355 was Ella Connolly. She crashed during the pro stage, but was now on the hunt for some time. The stage win and the overall points went to Bex Barona, who was now firmly locked on to Cordurier's lead. In the pro women's race, Cordurier led Barona by a scant 1.3 seconds. Becky Cook was having a superb day on the stages and was up to fourth. Gloria Scarzi was holding on to the front runners in third and Flo Espinera was sat in ninth. There was drama in the Canyon Collective pits after the Queen stage. Jack Moyer had flattened right at the top of the stage and done some real damage. He managed to put a tube in it and blow it up. He um, broke a spoke and kind of wrecked the wheel and the, the disc over here a bit. So we had to make a kind of quick decision there because he's 10 minutes behind. He's now pretty tight for time to make it up the transition to the next one. So we have decided to keep the old wheel, which is in pretty bad shape, but it's still going around. And, um, see if he can just keep right with that. Whilst Shark Attack Jack was left hunting for stage wins, there was trouble for Melamed. The Canadian had crashed and dropped 27 seconds in the process. Frenchman Irini Menju beat Martin Mays home to second on the stage. Rude, sensing trouble for Melamed, landed a hammer blow off a stage win. It was a breathless, hard to keep up with start of the day and after the opening two stages, here's how the overall looked. Richie Rood had a substantial 21 and a half second lead ahead of Ewan Deneau. Jesse Melamed was left staring up the road at a 26 second deficit. Matt Walker, despite the disappointment of stage two, was now back up to fifth. Slawomir Lukasic was the big winner of the morning, having pulled himself up 11 positions to ninth. Like, because it's changed so much, so looking up and just trying to ride smooth and get off the brakes where you can. Oh man, it's so slick. I was fighting so hard just to like keep the front tire under me and not let it exit the front door or me exit the front door. I don't know, it's like a fine line I'm trying to push in the open stuff when it's like there's speed, but then I'm really backing it off like in all the sketchy stuff because if you miss your line, even just a moment, your front tire just starts to deflect and like it can get out of hand really quick. This one more slippery than the second, so I have a little crash, but it's a long day, so we will see. The 1.6 kilometers of stage four was called jackpot and was a faster, slightly less technical stage with some meaty flat corners on the ski piece for those who fancy taking some chances. Cordurier and Barona remained locked together on stage four. The French woman beat the British rider home by just under two seconds to bolster her lead. 
Morgan Shar, who'd been having a quieter day on the stages by her standards, took the win on four. Because EWS Sugarloaf hadn't served up enough drama, there was more of it on Jackpot. Richie Rude lost six seconds and rolled in in 22nd, having lost the front end. Jesse Melamed won the stage to promptly capitalise. But remember those flat turns we mentioned? Sam Hill came second on the stage. Rude's slip hadn't been as costly as Melamed's. He now led the race by 20 seconds from the Canadian. Crusher DH was named after a local legend and was the second longest stage of the race. The big rocks and roots were back across a vertical drop of 500 metres. Morgan Shar finished the fifth stage in third, just behind his Bucardoglio. Bex Barona in sixth to Lapierre Zip Collective Rider was now 10.7 seconds to the good in the overall. Ella Connolly won stage five and was charging hard. Pro men's race was quickly turning into one of the most eventful in the sport's history. Rude, the leader, was down. I had a crash on the last two stages, so yeah, it's a bit brutal right now. Talk the front and the tree, so. Having at one stage had a commanding lead, the big American lost 49 seconds and injured his shoulder to boot. Jack Moyer, who had a nightmare start to the day, won the stage. Ewan Deneau and Jesse Melamed followed Moyer to the line which meant that the latter now led the race. Isabel Corderier still led. The positions behind her had fluctuated, but the lead had held and was now looking stable at 14 seconds. Marona and Connolly were second and third respectively, and Becky Cook was having one of her best races in several seasons in fifth, just behind Scarzi. The pro men's race had seen names tumbling left, right and centre all day. But finally, with one stage to go, Jesse Melamed led from Martin Mays, who busied himself with keeping it clean all day, and despite his first stage troubles, Matt Walker was now back into third. Rude, the one-time leader, was eighth, whilst the American Colton Peterson was having a stellar run in tenth. Made some silly mistakes on the pro stage, and I was really looking forward to, to racing here this weekend. The stages look unreal, so I feel like I'm going good today. Um, got a bit of fire back in my belly, which is is nice. It's been missing, so um, yeah, trying to ride fast and feel like I'm starting to get back there. So yeah, good. It's a bit of a weird one. Like you might think you're riding fast, and then it might not be a good stage for you, and then vice versa. So I feel like I've had my better stages when I kind of thought I was battling it out. <laughs> but um, it's the kind of terrain. It's just a, it's a bit unusual. You kind of need to know where to push and where to settle a bit. So I had a pretty rough start to the day, just kept like sliding out, crashing, couldn't find the right pace. The first couple of stages of the day were pretty wet, so I think I was just pushing a bit too much and had some wild moments. And then kind of ridden into the race, I put myself back up and have enjoyed the last couple of stages a lot. We're about to drop into stage six, the last stage, and it looks like it's in good condition, dried out a bit, so I'm excited for this one. Uh, I crashed on stage four, no, I crashed on stage three, but I just keep going and also did a top 10 with her, so not so bad. And I had a yeah, small, small uh, crash on stage four, but I twist my bar and I just push like during 30 seconds, but it doesn't work. So it was like more than one minute on this one and bye bye is the overall. So I just keep pushing on stage five, did a great one second. So now only one and just, I will reward this one it's, if it's like the stage one, that's it. Um, drop, about to drop into stage six, pro stage again. Um, the day's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, first stage really caught me by surprise today. It's just how like blown out it was and how sketchy it was. Like the dirt was gone between, so it was kind of like double the amount of rocks, double the amount of roots. So you just thought you could ride it like practice, but you really couldn't. So I had a big crash on the first one today and that kind of like pegged me back a bit. But um, it was almost a good thing because it made me settle down for the rest of them. and. Um, not lighting the world on fire with my stage results today, but just consistently chipping away, so stoked. I think it's very difficult for everyone. We are all very tired, and I'm just trying to focus on my riding and having fun and trying to keep it smooth. 
We just done stage five, which was dryers on in practice, and it was good. And now we are doing again the pro stage from yesterday, which is going to be stage six. Only one stage remained. The rerun of Rock Lobster would settle it once and for all. But after the Battle of Sugarloaf, the final outcome remained anyone's guess. Morgan Shar finished the final stage of the race in third. Ella Connolly won the final stage in a race that she had really ridden herself into. And it was that final push that would secure her third in the overall. Bex Barona was seventh on the stage, but it was enough to guarantee her second in the race. There was no stopping Isabel Cordurier, who won her third EWS of the year at the end of a block of racing that at one stage it looked unlikely she'd even attend. I'm super happy, honestly. I did not expect it, uh, to be able to do it on these three races, and living on a happy like ending is uh, perfect for me. I'm super stoked. It's kind of a fairy tale for me to win today after everything that I went through. Jack Moyer won the final stage again this year. It may not have been the result he wanted at the start of the weekend, but proof once more that the speed is definitely there. Martin Mays followed him home and was rewarded for having the most consistent, drama-free afternoon of the big names. The Belgian claimed a well-deserved second in the overall classification as a result. At the line, Rude was battered and bruised. That slam into the tree had hurt. The two-time champ headed for the medics at the finish for an assessment of just how bad the shoulder injury actually was. Jesse Melamed was third on the stage and secured himself the win in the process. At one stage, all had looked lost for the Canadian, but he had dug deep and stuck to the plan. The reward would be vital breathing space at the front of the overall standings. Hard, really hard. I think everyone's going to say that. Just by the fact that I was like basically last man standing. Uh, I rode a couple stages. I rode most stages really well, but stage three, I twisted my bars, tried to straighten them, didn't. So I rode all that, like bars twisted, had two more crashes because of it. So I thought like that was the win out and I was battling for a podium and then Unfortunately, I saw Richie on five, and I was like, okay, like, it's back on, but it's not the way you want it to go. Like, I'm glad I, you know, had one last stage to have to put it down under pressure, so it feels like I won on, like, the last one, so that's kind of good. Really tough to ride, changing, and, like, just, like I was saying, like, where there was no support, there was absolutely no support. So, like, even going slow, going fast, you'd, like, start losing it and then just fall all the way down. So I had a couple of things on that on stage three. The rest I thought were pretty good. The pro women's results in Cordurier from Barona from Connolly. Scarzi and Cook both completed standout rides. Morgan Shar lost some ground on Cordurier with an 8th place finish. Depending on what the prognosis is on that shoulder injury may yet make an impact on the destination of this title. Melamed takes top honours from Mays and the superb Walker. Alex Rudeau, an EWS E winner from earlier in the year, took fourth. Colton Peterson held on for a top 10 just in front of the three-time EWS champ, Sam Hill. That leaves the overall pro women's looking like this. It's a case of mission successful for Cordurier. She not only survived the block of back-to-back -back races, but extended her points lead in the process. It was 2-1 to Melamed in terms of Canada and North American rounds. He extended his lead and tightens his grip on the yellow plate. Martin Mays is third, just ahead of Eddie Masters, whilst another top 10 sees Cole Lucas in fifth. Pivot Factory Racing remain in control of the team's championship, ahead of Rocky Mountain Raceface and Yeti Fox. There we have it then. We hope you enjoyed that one as much as we did. An absolutely unbelievable race to round out three thrilling back-to-back -back races here in Canada and North America. We're going to take a couple of weeks break now before we return to Europe to round off what has been a captivating EWS season with the EWS Crom Montana. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for everyone who has helped us here on the other side of the Atlantic. We'll see you there.